You can turn your Bible to the book of Ezekiel. We're going to be reading chapter 36 today in this study. And uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about, answer a question actually. Should Christians help send Jews back to Israel? Um, one of the big themes of the end times is that the nation of Israel would be populated again, that people would be brought back, that it would become a nation again, and that they would be brought back in unbelief. Um, they don't come back as saved people. And um, so uh, that's already happened. And we're going to be talking about some big things here in this study. But let's start out here. Ezekiel chapter 36. Let's read here in our King James Bibles. Um, if you have a new version that comes from the Vatican, please understand that. I have lots of videos on the thing if you're using a new King James Version or NIV or ESV or NASB or whatever else. They all, the Vatican had a hand in producing those. Okay, that's why you don't want to use them. They're corrupt. <clears throat> and you can watch my videos on that to find more proof. It's going to take some study on your part. But Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 1. Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate, and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. <laughs> a lot of people hate the Jews. I'm not one of them. Okay, so just uh, don't try to do the anti-Semitic thing and I'm racist and whatever. Don't waste your time. Okay, I'm not anti-Jews. A lot of people are, but I'm not. Verse 4. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land unto their possession, with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Because I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Intermarry with them. Talk about shame of the heathen. Um, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountain of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to the, my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, and all the houses of Israel, even all of it, and the cities shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be builded. Has the uh, land of Israel changed over the years since a lot of the Jews have come back? <clears throat> Real and fake Jews have come back, the wheat and the tares that Jesus Christ talked about. Has Israel become a prosperous nation? Mm -hmm. It's Rothschild money and American taxpayer money. It's all this other stuff. Um, the Bible doesn't say that they come back in belief. The Bible come, says that they come back in unbelief. Let's continue reading and I'll show you that. But that has definitely been builded over there. Very wealthy nation. Verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. I think most Jews in Israel right now have a better life than they did you know, thousands of years ago, back in the Old Testament. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, uh, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth Bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land uh, devourest up men, and hast, de hast bereaved thy nations. Therefore shalt thou devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more, neither shalt thou hear the reproach of the, of the people any more, neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. There's a lot of political intrigue and things and financial intrigue with the Jewish people and other nations. In other words, 
Verse 16, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before them, me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Read the Old Testament. I mean, King David had it pretty good. He had things going pretty good. And after that, it pretty much fell apart. And, you know, you'd have a good king or whatever occasionally, but um, it got pretty bad with the idol worship and many of the other things that the nation of Israel did. <clears throat> Verse 18, Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. Uh, did that happen? The diaspora, you know, they call it. Um, the Jews being cast out into other nations. Did it happen? Yes, it did. Just like the Bible says right here in the Old Testament. So don't say, oh, it's an anti-Semitic rant, a New Testament Christian persecution or something. No, this is Old Testament. Verse 20, And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Kind of funny because they don't even say Jehovah. You know, and they certainly don't say Jesus, but they, you know, it's not even Jehovah, it's just the name, you know, Hashem. I find that so interesting, you know. Um, verse 22, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Hmm. Very interesting there. Um, let's continue reading down to verse 24. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Has it happened? Yes. Old Testament prophecy fulfilled. But keep your hand there in Ezekiel chapter 36. We'll be coming right back to it. But go to Matthew chapter 24. If you remember the last study I said about the thing of, uh, you know, this will be in the next study here. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse um, 4 through 9. The Bible says here, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. Hmm. Saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Going on the day. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be uh, hated of all name, nations for my name's sake. Wait a second. Ezekiel 36, back here in the Old Testament, we have the thing of, I'm going to do this for my name's sake. Verse 23, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen. Who's speaking? Well, that would be God the Father. Correct? Over here in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 9, he shall be hated of all nations for my Father's name's sake. Does he say that? No, he says, for my name's sake. So, uh, Jesus never claimed to be God. Then why is he giving the fulfillment of the prophecy back here in Ezekiel 36? Saying that you're going to be hated. You know, back here it says, uh, sanctify my great name. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Uh, all nations for my name's sake. Hmm. See how it ties together? Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 25. It says here, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. By the way, uh, the clean water, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 that we're to, a uh, husband is to uh, wash his bride or whatever in the water of the word. That's what it's talking about. This is the book that's going to sanctify and cleanse those Jewish people. 
that they will understand the book of Revelation is coming true, the revelation of Jesus Christ. They'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. See? I mean, it's going to be very convincing when Moses and Elijah show up and they're walking around the streets of Jerusalem, you know, doing great signs and wonders. A lot of the things that they did back there with the book of Exodus. I mean, this is a major study. This isn't just something, you know, that you can just say, oh, yeah, I get it, you know, whatever. Quick understanding. No, it's going to take you a little bit of time. But let's continue here. Um, Ezekiel chapter 36, uh, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. The spirit there, my spirit within you is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. That's given in the New Testament. Lots of things I could say about that too. Um, verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no more and lay no uh, famine upon you, and I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Right now the wicked rabbis are teaching the people that they don't need to feel that they're sinners. Going to regret that one too. Verse 32 Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be builded. That's what happened. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, the, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. That's what they're going to do with Gaza when they're done blowing it all up. <laughs> Just being honest about it. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined place, places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired, of by the house of Israel to do it for them, I will increase them with men like a flock. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. All right. An amazing chapter of Scripture, Ezekiel chapter 36. Uh, it destroys so many different heresies. It destroys replacement theology. It destroys the historicism argument that everything happened in the first century, all the book of Revelation, everything all came to pass, it destroys both of those heresies. Uh, the church has not replaced Israel. The people over there and, you know, and the whole Zionist thing and whatever else, the Zionist conspiracy, uh, there's things about Israel that are very bad and whatever, because the Bible said that that's what would happen. They're brought back in unbelief. Some people don't really understand that. But Ezekiel 36, verse 31, the thing of, Then shall ye remember uh, your own e evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Let's go to um, and uh, well, keep your hand there in Ezekiel 36 because there's something else I have to point out yet. But go to Zechariah chapter 12. I have to pause the video and look up in the table of contents, contents how to get to it. It's after the book of Daniel. You go towards the New Testament and you'll see um, Zephaniah and then it goes to Zechariah uh, after that. Zechariah chapter 12. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 12 verses 9 through 10 says, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the house of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. 
All right. So back here in Ezekiel 36, you have there that they are remembering their own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Over here in Zechariah uh, chapter 12, verse 10, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him. All right. As one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Hmm. Very interesting. But I want you to look at something else. Ezekiel 36, verse 38 says, They shall know that I am the Lord. The last sentence right there in verse 38, Ezekiel 36, verse 38, They shall know that I am the Lord. Zechariah chapter 12, verse um, 10 they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. They shall know that I am the Lord. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced. It's connected. Who are they looking upon? They're looking upon the Lord whom they pierced. So, uh, should Christians be helping Jews get back to their land? Yes. Well, I think that we should make a nice place here and we should try to, uh, you know, stop the persecution of Jews in this country and, and give them a safe place to stay here in America. Then you're going against Scripture. The whole world's going to turn against the nation of Israel and anybody who calls themselves Jewish. And for good reason, because they're doing a lot of very wicked things right now with all the usury and the evil corruption and whatever else. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, a lot of the white hate stuff that's coming out, um, people that people should hate white people, a lot of the racist type of things. Um, there's a lot of Jews that hate white people. They think that we're dogs and we're evil people and whatever else. And they're doing their best to try to bring persecution to us, saying uh, white Christian nationalism and whatever else and horrible, ugly things about white people. Um, I just got the book about... Um, I don't have it here, the Kalergi plan or whatever. Oh, there it is. I'll grab it here quick. It's called uh, Practical Idealism. <clears throat> the Kalergi plan to destroy European peoples. Right there it is. Mingled uh, guy right there, half Jewish, half Japanese or something, I think he was. And uh, reading through some of the stuff in here, it's vile. You talk about hatred. This stuff is evil right here. But that's what they want to do. Oh, it's been debunked. It's, there's no truth to it, whatever. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to flood the European countries with you know, immigrants from other nations and, and take away the people and we'll arrest the people and leave the you know, illegals coming in there and whatever. Uh, yeah, boy, that's just all it has been debunked. It, it's not happening or something. No, it's happening. Okay. It's happening, and it's very tragic, and it's very horrible. And the Jewish people are going to, um, they're going to be punished by God for what they're doing, quite frankly. Um, and if we have love for those people as Christians, and again, they're not all involved. You just can't, every Jew, any, anything that falls under the title Jew is evil or something. That's not true. Um, and there will be people that will not leave, no matter what. Um, but there are other people that might be willing to say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'd like to go back to the nation of Israel. I mean, think of the power that they could have if they all went back of their own free will. But we cannot make a place for them here. We cannot say, well, the Jews should be able to stay here in America and things. No, they shouldn't because it goes against the scriptures. And I believe that we should be sending the Jews back to Israel. Not as a racist thing. Not, oh, we have to purify the land of the evil Jews or something. That's not the case. It's what the Bible says in the Old Testament that God's going to gather them back to their own land so that he can reveal himself to them. The book of Revelation, the end times, it's what it's all about. So um, if you're a Jewish viewer out there, hopefully you're in Israel already, but if you're not, go on over. And the body of Christ has to start making a big issue of this and saying, you know what, um, we need them to go over there to Israel. I'm not for the Jews being here in this land and carrying out 
uh, this thing of trying to build their own world government and whatever else because they reject the scriptures. Uh, that's not right. It really isn't right. So uh, my stand is uh, I want to see the Jewish people go back to their own land. And um, until the catching up of the body of Christ, I need to have a place to uh, be safe. And if we do not stand against a lot of this type of stuff right here, this evil, if we don't stand against this kind of a thing, these people are going to hunt us down like animals and kill us when we haven't even done anything. <laughs> so again, they're coming after us and saying all oh, whites have done, have had slaves and things. My ancestors never did. They were pacifists that lived in the north in Pennsylvania. We didn't have slaves. Um, <clears throat> they're colonial, colonialists. They've gone and conquered other countries. No, you know, mine, again, Anabaptist family. Um, we weren't going out conquering other lands. Um, well, they, they hate all other races but their own. Well, that's not true. Uh, we're not white supremacists or anything else. Um, so, but I'm going to fight against this stuff. Uh, the Jews need to get out of America because the Bible says that that's what's going to happen. So do not stand for movements that keep Jewish people here in America because it goes against the scriptures. Um, they are out of bounds. They don't belong here. All right? Uh, go back to your land, please, because that's where the promises are. You have the land of promise, right? Um, so that's going to be it. And I thank you very much for watching. Please do pray for us. Um, I could go off about a bunch of things that are going on right now, but I'm just going to let that go because uh, <laughs> there's a, a lot of things that we struggle with and we just have to get through it. Quite simply, um, a part of it, I'll just say this, is this video that I did against the Talmud and the vile comments that I'm getting. And uh, a lot of them are from, you know, Jewish type of channels. And, I mean, people that are just filled with hatred. I mean, I've dealt with Catholics. I've dealt with posties with, you know, all the different cults out there and things. Um, and there have been some really wicked ones and some vile people, but... Some of these comments that I'm getting, you know, in favor of the Talmud and against what I'm saying, talk about some vile comments. Um, and there's there's some wicked people out there. So um, they're going to eventually try to get this channel shut down, and whether or not that happens is up to the Lord. I've had so many threats, you know, and the one guy said that uh, you better be careful. They'll they'll send Mossad agents after you. Yeah, send the CIA, send Mossad, send the FBI, send death squads and hit teams and the Jesuits and whatever whatever and I'm not just I'm not, oh you're just talking down there you boy you wait till they come to your door and you'd be scared to death and whatever else oh well I'd probably would have some level of fear but you know just because my flesh would be afraid but um I don't care I really don't care I have never uh tried to politically do some kind of politically correct thing or whatever else or, no I don't do that um so, um, please do pray for the ministry. Thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry. And uh, we'll keep doing it as long as the Lord says to. And um, so I guess that'll be it. And we'll see you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.